Hey YouTube, it's Jamie. Smoking in my car, as usual. Mm. I thought it might be cool to do a nighttime edition. Mm. Yeah, it looks cool. I mean, as far as what I'm seeing on the screen. I got the cob out. Pat Shanahan gave me this cob. Buddy of mine. A Freemason. Mm. In it, I have uh, some uh, luxury bullseye flake. Stokeby luxury bullseye flake. Which is uh, Virginia Perique with some... Uh, Uh, black Cavendish. <clears throat> yeah. I've been smoking this all week, on and off. I've been alternating between this and uh, a couple of Englishes. That's not quite true, though. Between this and my mixture 965 has been pretty heavy in my rotation this week. Uh, and I had some nightcap the other day. <clears throat> um, yeah, but I typically go back and forth. It's almost like, you know, when you have like a salty snack and then you want a sweet snack and then that sets you up for a salty snack and stuff like that. And you just go back and forth, sweet, salty, sweet, salty. I'm like that with Virginias and Englishes. If my last bowl was a Virginia, then I start to crave Englishes. And if I smoke two Englishes in a row, I'm like set up for a lap bomb. I want a lap bomb after that. Which was pr probably why, realistically, that was probably why I was smoking uh, Nightcap the other day. I probably smoked Virginia's all day up to that point. And needed a, the, you know, Nightcap, Nightcap to kick me in the face with La Tequila. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is nice, though. This is, uh... Yeah, that that luxury bullseye flake that I've been uh, prepping for myself. Sometimes, yeah, like putting like eight hours in between bowls, but prepping my next bowl when it, like when I'm done with this one, I'm going to rub some more flake out, pack this bowl, and take like five or six puffs off of it. And then I'm gonna put it down. It's just, I really like it like that. Oh, I look like Dracula in the smoke. It looks like a horror film. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about music for a minute. Music has been so important to me my whole life. Uh, if you saw any of my other videos, there were a couple. I made some musical analogies about chords, about how a, a tobacco mixture is like a chord, you know. Each of the constituents constituent tobaccos represent a note in a chord that is made, you know. Mm. And I talked about the analogy of, you know, casing is to a tobacco mixture as mastering is to a musical track. You know? Can you see that kind of connection there? Because casing just kind of unifies and integrates a mixture. Just as mastering unifies and integrates um, a multi-track recording so yeah I go to those musical analogies because you know I've been like uh, as a hob hobbyist plus as semi-pro at various times uh, doing music my whole life like I I played um, upright bass 
the only time I was playing professionally without having a day job was when I played upright bass uh, in jazz combos uh, back east. That was about 12, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. We would play all over Connecticut, New York, uh, in various combos, doing like jazz standards. I'm not talking about, you know, reinventing the wheel and doing a bunch of avant-garde stuff. I'm talking about, you know, real book stuff. Real book meaning, you know, um, recognizable standards. You know, footprints, uh, all the things you are, autumn leaves, you know, uh, Nothing too chat. I can't even remember the name. I at one time though I had about uh I think I had about a hundred and fifty tunes under my fingers that I didn't need to uh I didn't need to consult a lead sheet or chord changes. That's pretty good. But I I've got a decent memory. I was good at that game, Simon. You ever play Simon when you were a kid? It was like this game where light and sound, like there's these four like um, buttons, right? And there are four different colors, the primary colors plus like, I don't know, green or something like that. And um, and it would like beep, boop, boop. And you had to press beep, boop, boop in the proper sequence, uh, both in color and sound. Pretty cool game, in fact, like for a, a child to have to like to play Simon like you've got to engage some really foundational developmental uh, kind of uh, functions of the mind and brain you know mind and brain I was thinking about mind and brain the other day and the difference isn't the mind is the product of the brain the brain is the gray matter, the, the actual thing. But the mind, you can't like point to the mind. If you point here, you're not pointing to the mind. You're pointing to the skull and the brain. There, You can't point to the mind. The mind is this, uh, you know, numinous, mysterious kind of uh, phenomenon, epiphenomenon. The mind has no substance. Does it? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think it does though. I think the mind is the product of the brain and the mind has is it is literally metaphysical, beyond the physical. Don't tell me I smoked this down already. I was enjoying this too much. Mm. Like and subscribe. Um, I want to pick this up and talk about this. So there's so much things I want to talk about. Like, it seems like every time I do one of these, I'm like, well, I want to talk about this some more. Maybe I'll do a part two. Mm. So, in the comments, is the mind the product of the brain? Is that right? If not, I mean, what is it? A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Remember the old commercial? Remember the Ministry album? The Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste. They were like riffing on that commercial. I'm going to talk more about music next time. Um, not jazz, because that alienates people. I'll talk to you later.